Welcome back to another episode of Tactile DR. Judging by the title, you already know exactly what we're going to be talking about. SpaceX's Starship SN9 may be launching in the next few hours. That is exactly what we're talking about today. I also have a little bit of news regarding Blue Origin, so if you want to know about that, be sure to stick the whole episode. But let's get into SpaceX and the SN9 launch. Now, there are multiple reasons saying we won't launch today and multiple reasons saying that SpaceX will launch it today. Now, I think that the SN9 will launch today, and I'm going to give you a little bit of context as to why. So the first thing I have here is on SpaceX's website themselves, saying that as of Thursday today, January 28th, they are going to attempt the SN9's hop test as well as trying to land it. The concern that people are having right now is apparently the FAA hasn't cleared the airspace for them. They have not given them approval in order to do an SN9 launch. On their website, though, we can see in Brownsville, Texas, which is the area in which the Boca Chica SpaceX launch pad is, we see that it's cleared on their website for today, January 28th, and tomorrow, Friday, January 29th. So I would say that based off of those things, at this point, SpaceX does have the clearance to do the Starship launch. On Twitter, locals to the area were told to evacuate, not just road closers, but to evacuate the area by 8 a.m. in the Texas area. So depending on where you live, time varies, but the SN9 is supposedly going to launch because of this. I don't see why else they would be getting closures and evacuation notices if SpaceX was not fully confident in this. And also we know this wouldn't just be like a static fire test. The SN9 has gone under multiple static fire tests. SpaceX has done plenty of testing at this point. As you know, they've done the engine swaps. They've gone successful. And even when they do those, they're just given road closures. They don't, or they're not told to evacuate at all. So with SpaceX making an actual announcement, this is the first time they've really done any sort of announcement regarding the SN9 at all. As you know, SpaceX and Elon Musk are very elusive when they talk about this stuff. You don't even know about what's going to happen until the day before that they will announce something. So with both of those things in mind, I think that there's absolutely no reason why SpaceX isn't going to go with it. If we look at the weather for today in that area, the winds are only saying 15 miles an hour. Now, yesterday and the day before, they were like 30, 40 mile an hour winds. SpaceX is not going to launch anything in those types of conditions when they're doing testing. If the wind is what knocks this thing out of balance and is the reason why they're not able to successfully land it, or land it, handle and land it, that really doesn't give them enough data to fix anything because they can't correct the wind. They can't account for that. They can once they have a good system in place and they can, I'm sure at that point, they will be able to land it no matter what the wind is, as long as it's not like 60 mile an hour plus, but at 15 miles an hour, I think that will be light enough for them to be confident to do this test where it won't throw anything out of whack to the point where they wouldn't be able to land this. So we recap on these things. We have good weather. We have locals being told to evacuate the area. And we have SpaceX themselves announcing that they want to do it today. I don't see any reason why they're not going to. Like I said, the FAA is weird. It says on their website they have clearance. Other people all over Twitter are saying, no, they have not signed off on it yet. I'm confident that SpaceX will get this. I'm not live streaming the launch itself, but there are going to be plenty of people. If you want to see the live launch itself, I'll probably be showing a video tomorrow if they do a successful launch and landing because we're definitely going to be talking about it, what it means, what happens, and talk about the SN10 if the SN9 goes well. So if that's all you want to know about the SN9, I understand. Be sure to click the like button on your way out. It helps me tremendously. And subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. But if you want to learn more a little bit about what's going on with Blue Origin, we can get into that as well. So this is coming from spacenews.com. And the Space Force, which uh, became official over the recent administration, has officially ended their partnerships with Blue Origin as, long, uh, as well as Northrop Gunman. Now, I'm not going to get into Northrop too much. I want to talk more or less about Blue Origin just because they're more relevant when it comes to SpaceX. So Blue Origin was handed this contract from essentially the United States Department of Defense, Space Force, whatever you want to call it, and it had to do with developing rockets for their National Security Space Launch Program. Now this money was helped to use to make Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket to develop systems for that. However, they have decided to part ways with Blue Origin and Northrop. They're actually going with SpaceX now. And I, you know, Blue Origin, I know they're going to stay with it. They're going to keep going. 
and I have a little bit of info regarding that coming up next. But it is sad to see these other companies get cut off and SpaceX kind of taking everything over. Don't get me wrong, I talk about SpaceX in every every day and every episode. I like SpaceX, I like the mission and what they're doing, but I like variety and I like competition. When they're the only group, when they're the only company that's competing like this, it kind of takes some of the fun out of it in a way. You know, don't get me wrong, I understand they're choosing because they make a superior product, and I hope that Blue Origin gets to that point of being able to actually compete with SpaceX. We all know right now they're not even close. But I hope that they can get to that point. I don't want SpaceX to be the only company that we are relying on for this technology. I want Blue Origin to be a successful company. I want the other companies that we were talking about yesterday, they're going to have the first, I don't know why I can't remember right now, they're going to have the first commercial space station i want them to oh axiom i want axiom to succeed i want blue origin to succeed i want more large-scale space companies in the space it's going to take time i understand that but again like i said it is unfortunate to see them take the l on this one hopefully in the future they can correct this they can come back with more contracts but they're not giving up just yet as you see here they're still testing for the blue origins be4 engine now these engines are going to be used in both the new glenn that we were just talking about, as well as the Vulcan rocket. So it's good to see, even though they just lost a big contract, they're still working full steam. Obviously, a $250 million contract from the government is nothing when the owner and financer of your company literally puts billions of dollars into this every year. So the financial aspect of it isn't going to hurt them. And according to them, the BE-4 is about 10% more thrust than SpaceX's Raptor engines, so... We'll see about how they do with that. That's all I have for you guys on this episode. If you want more info regarding SpaceX, Blue Origin, any of that space stuff, be sure to click the subscribe button. I have more channel content like this coming out every day. Be sure to click the like button on your way out. It helps me a lot and helps me make sure that this is the type of content you guys want to listen to. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments about the SN9 or anything related to Blue Origin today, be sure to let me know in the comments. I love interacting with you guys and hearing what you guys have to say. Either one, either way. Either way or either one, have a good one.